hello, hello, welcome back to Hunter 2, and today I picked up a DSM. I don't know why. I mean, I kind of know why. I got this car on trade and uh, filmed some clips with it and uh, kind of showed the car, walk around it, and uh, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, a good going to town unit. I'm actually trading this Mazda. So I bought this car a while ago. Um, and I fixed up a couple things on it and I'm trading it for a car that I probably shouldn't trade it for but I'm gonna do it just because um, I don't know I kind of want to tinker with a different import uh, other than a Honda and you guys will see what it is here in a minute all right guys so now we are in a different car a little louder car and only the second one of these types of cars that I've ever owned uh, the first one of these cars that I had um, it was almost the same thing as this car but it was a a gear shifter type and this one is a automatic but uh, still has a turbo charged engine uh, four-cylinder and uh, yeah I traded that little Mazda for it um, I didn't have a whole lot of tied up I didn't have really anything tied up into that Mazda so I figured why not just have fun with this thing and maybe learn another platform uh, and that's what we're gonna try to do with this thing so I'm gonna show you when we get uh, back to the house what this thing is all about uh, you guys can probably tell by the uh, dashboard what it is but uh, yeah so got it exactly like this how you see it but I'm driving at home so that's a good start but she's definitely a little bit angry uh, when it comes to the loud pedal down here. It doesn't sound right. Uh, it's probably a little lean, a little spark blow out, a little something. I don't know. It doesn't sound that great, but... And it seems like it's on too much boost. For what it's... And it just cuts out. Um... Yeah, wideband uh, kind of works. Uh, it's an innovative, which I don't like. I don't like these widebands at all. So I'll probably take that out of here and sell it. Put an AEM in or something. Yeah, it doesn't really richen up when I get into it. So that's not good. So she's a little lean stronger automatic for a four-cylinder these cars actually have a pretty stout automatic transmission so I'm pretty excited about that um, yeah we can do whatever we want with this thing really play with it a little while get it running good drive it for a little bit sell it who knows but uh, let's take a look on the outside of the car Kind of looks like an Oldsmobile Alero from the front end. <laughs> Does have uh, some paint fading here on the trunk and on the roof, but yeah, it's got some nice little wheels on it, good tires, and it is an Eagle Talon TSI. It's only front wheel drive. Uh, but like I said, I didn't have anything into that Mazda. So we're going to try out this Talon and see where we can go with it. And if I can learn a new platform, I do not know how to tune these cars, um, or even what to do to tune them. I know it actually does have a black box ECU. So I think I can use a Tactrix cable, uh, to tune it, but I'm pretty clueless when it comes to DSM stuff. I've never actually done one. So, and the door handle on this side doesn't open. So yeah, I can't even get in now. Hopefully the other side's not locked, but it probably is, and I'll be screwed. Oh, thank goodness. All right, let's open the door from here. Okay. It does smell like oil, uh, pretty, pretty bad. I don't know if it leaks oil or what, but it smells like oil. 
missing this little panel right here. I don't know if it's sitting back here. Maybe it is. Gave me a bunch of parts for it. Receipts. Stock ECU, I think. So here's the engine bay. Uh, looks pretty good. The strut towers and stuff are really clean. I know it's really common for these things to rot out on the strut towers. Um, it does have an Optima battery in it, which is super nice. Uh, it has a fuel filter off the valve cover, so that's pretty cool. It's got an engine tuned intake, um, and I think it has a different turbo on it. I don't know exactly what turbo. Uh, it looks like a TD-05. It has exhaust on it, and it smells like oil from in here. And it looks like the dipstick or something leaks. Maybe it just has so much blow by that it's blowing this thing off. Um, but yeah, other than that, let's look here. I mean, it's not really huffing out of here. Let's try here. Yeah, it's pretty good. I don't think it's really got a ton of blow by. Maybe it's just leaking, leaking oil. Um, yeah, and I think it's got like, I don't know what injectors, 550s or something maybe. I don't know. Uh, the intercooler piping is super janky. Uh, he said that it's like rubbing and it's rubbed through in a couple spots. And I know that's a big deal on these cars is if, you know, if you have any leaks on the boost track, it's not going to be happy so we may have to fix some boost leaks that are running around in here and once we do that maybe it'll run a lot better maybe it doesn't even need a tune but but currently it does need something because it doesn't really run that good and i shut this fucking door again I mean, all the lights seem to work. Drives down the road really good. The tranny shifts off amazing. The heater works. So that's cool. Alrighty, guys. So I'm back at the house now with the Talon. Uh, it's actually the next day. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys are interested in this thing. Um, I mean, I never really was a DSM guy, and I still kind of really am not. But I think... Uh, it'd be cool to try to fix this car up a little bit. Uh, having a little bit more knowledge now than I did the last time I owned one of these cars. The last time I had one of these cars, I was like 17 years old. And uh, I, I skipped the timing on it, and then I sold it for like 500 bucks because I didn't know what I was doing. So now, um, maybe I'd like to go through this car and see if we can get it running a little bit better because right now it kind of runs like crap. Um, but nonetheless, I, like I said, I don't have much of anything into this car and I think it'd be cool to uh, play around with it. Um, I don't know how hard it would be to do an all-wheel drive conversion on it considering it is front-wheel drive. Um, I don't know if the parts just bolt on. I've heard they just bolt on but I don't know if I have to put a different transmission in it to do it or if there's something that just kind of bolts on to the outside of it. I'm not sure how that all works um, but yeah so today me and the girlfriend kind of went out uh, snowmobiling. We were going to just uh, kind of test out the sleds to make sure that they were good. And we ended up riding for like three hours. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a hoot. We had a ton of fun. Um, probably bring the snowmobiles in here tonight and kind of get them cleaned off and um, de-ice them. Because they're kind of full of ice now after riding them all day. But, uh, yeah, next couple days uh, I'm probably going to be out plowing on the ice. Uh, with the four-wheeler uh, just to get uh, some stuff started. Um, I want to maintain um, plowing on the ice for racing because I'd like to do some racing this year on the ice, uh, whether it be uh, just with friends or maybe do some sort of little get-together, maybe some little racing event. I think it'd be kind of cool to do that. I've um, been saying I've been to do it for the last two years now, and I haven't because the ice has kind of just sucked. Uh, but this year, so far, the ice is, is pretty good. Uh, flat wise uh, it's not thick enough yet for cars but it is definitely uh, smooth ice which is exactly what we need uh, we just have to maintain that smooth ice so if mother nature is on our side and we don't get a bunch of wind and rain and stuff like that to screw it all up 
um, we should be in the clear. But anyways, uh, I'm tearing into this uh, Eclipse a little bit. Um, it did smell like oil uh, a little bit when I was driving home, and I don't know if it's because of, uh, it does seem like it's maybe leaking oil out of the dipstick here. Maybe it's just burning off the manifold. But uh, yeah, so I did notice a little leak there, and then I have an oil puddle kind of down here next to the boost controller that probably shouldn't be on it. Um, but yeah, there's a puddle like laying on the transmission down here, so not right there. Ooh, right down in there next to the radiator. There it is. There's the puddle. You can see the puddle of oil down there. So I don't know where that's coming from. This intercooler piping is definitely, um, you know, pretty janky. Uh, especially like you can see right here, this hose clamp is like way down on the end of the pipe. Um, usually I always try to put hose clamps at the edge of the intercooler piping. Uh, so that is definitely an issue. Um, probably got to go through this intercooler piping a little bit. And I also see down here, there's duct tape on the intercooler piping. Um, right down there. I don't know if you guys can see. There's duct tape. There's duct tape. There it is. You can see it now. Duct tape on the intercooler piping. So I'm gonna, going to remove all the intercooler piping off of this thing quick because these cars uh, run with the mass airflow sensor. So if there's any leak, um, you know, in the piping or anything like that, they definitely run like crap. Or if they have vacuum leaks, um, stuff like that. I do remember uh, helping my buddy with his Evo and it was pretty stock. But every time it started running like crap or idling like crap or anything like that, it was always related to a boost leak or a vacuum leak of some sort. So, And this intercooler piping, like I said, looks a little janky. So I think that'd be a good place to start is to just kind of inspect the intercooler piping and make sure there's no holes or anything like that. The turbo does seem a little wobbly too. So down there, the turbski potato. Um, is a little bit wobbly. It's kind of hard to show you on camera, but um, it does have some shaft play. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's hitting the housing or anything, so it might be fine for a little while. But it may need a turbo soon, sometime soon. Um, but yeah, I mean, these things are pretty easy to work on. It's kind of just like a Honda, and, and you know, in a sense, because the exhaust is on the front, the intake's on the back. Kind of same design. Um, I will be going through the receipts tonight because the guy gave me a ton of receipts with this thing. It looks like it's got like, you know, a new motor mount here. Um, I hope they did the timing and stuff like that. That'd be really cool. And I'm assuming they did because it has brand new like power steering belt, alternator belt, all that kind of stuff. So if they were in this area and they replaced the motor mount and they replaced these belts, I'm assuming they did the timing, which would be really cool because these things are notorious for having timing issues and crank walk and all that kind of stuff and head gasket failure so i'd like to go through the receipts on this thing because the guy gave me a huge list of receipts of stuff that was replaced on the car so i'd like to go through those and see uh what was all replaced or um what the what the deal is with the car so um it is tuned i think he said it had like 550 cc injectors in it but i don't have a tactrix cable or anything like that to be able to tune this car i'd like to but I don't really know much about it. I don't know much about tuning them. I'd like to do it as easy, the easiest way possible, obviously, uh, to just kind of get it running better. But we're going to start with the intercooler piping and see uh, where that leads. If you guys want to see more on this car, let me know down in the comments. And, uh, yeah, we're going to be doing some cool stuff soon with the Mustang. Um, just been enjoying some time with the sleds and um, hanging out with the girlfriend a little bit. So... Anyways, thanks for watching guys. Have a great night and a better tomorrow. We will see you later.